everyone for uh, joining us. I'm just going to slowly let people join in the webinar before I get going properly. Um, yeah, nice to see uh, people joining. There's been a, a slight problem with the link. Some people haven't got the link, so we've just resent it out to uh, everyone. Um, Eventbrite's running a little bit behind. It was waiting in the queue there. So I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes for everyone to join in and then we'll get going. So I'm seeing some familiar um, names coming up there. So Trevor, Murray, um, Alex, uh, Barbara, Andrew, yeah, Matt. So people are starting to filter in and join. Uh, literally, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and then we're going to get cracking uh, with uh, what we've got on. So a little over cap of what we're going to be covering. We are going to be using gels. We're going to be doing a, a little live shoot as well. Uh, after You have to appreciate in these times we can't get a model in. So I've uh, dragged Lisa, my wife, in to be the, the model. Um, so it's all good fun and we'll get some pretty cool images but i'll explain all about that as we get going a couple of seconds before i can see loads of people are starting to filter in now um, and then we can get going one of the most important things is it's questions and answers so if you have questions please do throw them up we have got uh, rod from rotolite with us today and we've got matt from wex uh, they're going to be answering questions in the background as much as they can and I will try and cover uh, as many questions as I can as well. We was inundated with questions last time so uh, it's good that we've got a couple of people on board. Uh, right on that note we've got a, a nice couple of numbers uh, coming in so I think we'll get started and I just need to share my screen. Um, So again, how it'll work with um, the Q&As. If you've got a question, use the question and answers. Uh, if you've got a direct question for someone, then you can use the chat um, uh, part of it. Uh, that's the easiest way to kind of explain how, how it works. So I need to just share my screen on one part and then I can explain who I am and then we'll, uh, we'll get going on the actual workshop itself so really excited about this so bear with me we're going to share a screen i'm going to go for this okay so for everyone that doesn't know who i am my name's robert Pugh, and uh, this is my website if you want to know more about me then jump over to my website um, and have a good browse through if you go down to the about me that tells you all about myself and I have a section of what's in my camera bag so you can have a good nosy of that as well. The blog is something I like to keep up to date and we're always putting on there uh, little tips as well. So there's one there on the headshots. So do head over to uh, the blog and see what's going on. If you want to book onto any training, we do have a dedicated training section there. So head over to there. This is where we put all of our workshops. Now we're doing this in conjunction with Rotolite today. So again, um, just put in Google Rotolite and their website will come straight up. You can head over to their uh, page. We'll be using these products today. Most of the Neo2 and the EOS, that's what we're going to be using today. If you want to see more of their events, go to their events section. Now, normally this is absolutely full of events up and down the country. Uh, but obviously at, the, uh, at this sort of strange time, what's going on, then uh, we've had to diverse to webinars instead of live shoots. But make sure you keep a, an eye on this event section because there is a wealth of uh, workshops, webinars, events and also where rotolites are around the uh, country at certain times of the year like the photography show or the ibc show as well so uh, definitely worth keeping an eye on let me just go back because i am going to stop that and i'm now going to start another screen and then we will uh, get going so i need to share my whole desktop we will close this out and then I can start get. Okay, so 
If um, hopefully everyone can see this slide, it's going to start off on a slide for the first 10 minutes. We're going to go through a couple of things. Uh, if you've been on the last two webinars, the first, say, three, four slides are the same, and then it goes on to uh, Chroma, that I like to call it. Um, then halfway through, we're going to switch over to the camera and we're going to do a live shoot. And I'm going to do two, um, two scenarios with two different setups as well. So stay on board and make sure you watch that. Uh, very interesting when it comes to uh, gels. So, Chroma, um, this is me. Uh, if you don't know uh, anything about myself, if you've not heard of me before, then uh, my name is Rob Pugh. I'm an international wedding photographer. Uh, international is because I cover weddings uh, all over. So wherever they are, that's where I go. Um, my actual career started in the British Army. I was a sniper in the Fusilier 2nd Battalion. Um, you know, some might say looking through a scope and looking through a camera is the same thing. And I have to agree, it pretty much is. Uh, I've always got a target and I'm always looking at someone. So that's a good way to put it. Um, equipment. So before I get onto equipment, there is some offers on today. So let me share those um, offers with you. Uh, so uh, these are what uh, Road to Light have got on offer at the moment through Wex and uh, Wex, Matt from Wex, he will send out all the offers to everyone as well. So there's no need to get your pens and papers out and start jotting it down. Matt will send out a list of all the offers that's, um, that's going up. Key ones to take into consideration here, the Neo 2, the Neo uh, Barn Doors Bundle. Um, and I would definitely say if you are going to purchase any of them, then go for these AA batteries that Road to Light do. They are specific for the Neo 2. They're high capacity uh, batteries, um, so they will last a long time uh, on a, a running um, your Neo 2s. If you just use cheap, AA batteries, then they're just going to go flat as quick as you use the, the Neo. So make sure you use high capacity uh, batteries. Uh, this is my standard kit that I use. Uh, I use the, uh, the AOS and the Neo 2. And this is my uh, equipment. So uh, I use the Sony A92. I use an 85 millimeter f1.8 and a 55 f1.8. I will be using the 55 millimeter uh, f1.8 today. Um, that's kind of my preferred lens to use. So when I'm doing weddings, I, I could actually shoot the whole wedding on a 35 and a 55. Um, I only actually use Free lens when uh, sorry free lenses in total uh, for all my weddings. So what are we going to look at today? So we're going to look at the color theory, gels and colors, planning and approach, one light setup, two light setup, and if we've got enough time, we will definitely try and do a three light setup. I'm going to show you some funky brackets that uh, you can make, so you only need to use one stand with three lights. Um, so we've got loads to get through. And again, if you've got any questions, make sure you use the Q&A section. Um, if you use the chat section, uh, I don't really see much of that when I'm doing presentations. The Q&As, I will see that all the time, okay? So, so moving on. I want to talk to you about uh, the color wheels, okay? So there's, there's actually three different types of color wheels and you need to understand these before you can start playing around with, uh, with gels, okay? So uh, the CMY, so the CMY color model, also known as a subtractive color model, is commonly used by visual artists. It demonstrates what happens when you overlap color pigments. So this is what I actually use for my shoot. If you've seen it at the photography show where I use three lights with three different gels on, uh, when the light hits the subject, they're lit um, perfectly, but then their shadows uh, are all different colors. And we've got some examples of that as we uh, move along. Now, it's like think a bit about it when you go to B&Q and you want a certain kind of paint and then you'll, 
you'll ask for the paint to be mixed. Well, they don't just throw in one pot and then it magically makes that color. They actually mix different colors of paint. So the paint is pure, just colors. So they might put a yellow in, they might put a, a blue in to make a certain different colors. And that's where I got this sort of theory on, well, if I mix light, then I can create different colors from that light. So it's all very well, you want a, a red background and you stick a red gel on, but maybe you haven't got that red, um, that red gel. So if you use magenta and yellow, well, you'll get red. It's, it's pretty much as simple as that. So if anyone does want this slide as well, um, then uh, I'm happy to let them have the slide. We are recording this and it will go on the Road to Lights YouTube, so you can watch it as many times as you want. Uh, if you do want the slide, then all you have to do is follow me on Instagram and then I will send you the slides as well. So how cool is that? Then there is the RGB, okay? So there's different uh, color wheels. And again, you need to understand this to start mixing with uh, different colors and different gels. The RGB or uh, additive color model demonstrates what happens when colored lights on different wavelengths overlap, okay? So one thing to note here is um, when we put uh, red, blue and green together, when they all overlap each other, do you notice how in the center it create, creates white, okay? So this is a, a really good way of doing it. Like I said to uh, you earlier, when, um, when I normally do my free light setup with the colors, it's normally cyan, magenta and yellow. But if you use red, blue and green, it can be done with that as well. And, and the shadows will come out as yellow, cyan and magenta. But what happens is the center part where all three, all three uh, lights with the gels, where they overlap, it creates white light. So therefore, if your subject is within that center of everything crossing, they will be lit with white light, but behind them, their shadows will come out as magenta, yellow, and cyan. So, and you, it does, it, it, when you put the gels on the lights, the order that you put them on affects um, the, the, the color pattern as it comes onto the shadows as well. So it, it's always interesting to have an experiment. Uh, I'll tell you my theory on gels towards the end, on what I think and, and why I use gels as well. So the, the one thing we do have to look at is complementary colors, okay? So every color has a complementary color. So complementary colors sit opposite to each other on the color wheel. To identify uh, the colors complement, first determine which color model that you're going to use. So obviously if you're going to use red, then the flat complementary color of that is green, okay? Uh, also green bleeds into cyan. So if you're using red, you can actually use cyan as well. So they're complementary colors. That's the important thing to use. In the RYB model, for example, the complement of red is green, like I've just said. Uh, in the RGB model, red complement is cyan. So uh, you can get these uh, diagrams. If you do a, a search on uh, Google, then you can get little charts that you can save onto your phone. Uh, like I said, I don't mind sending this to uh, people uh, along with the, uh, the charts. And then you can send it, save them onto your phone. You can even get an app where it actually tells you the complementary colors. So when you're thinking of doing a shoot, don't just turn up to a shoot and think, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna use uh, red and yellow for this because you know, it might not work. As long as you always use the opposite color, then that's always gonna work. So if you're using red, if you use green or cyan because those are the opposite colors to it. So get to know your complementary uh, colors. And then, this is the last um, color wheel, but this is the one that 
a lot of people don't really grasp and understand. So uh, monochromatic, uh, the term for monochromatic is often used to describe a black and white images. However, it can also refer to the use of a single color um, or a shade of a color. So for instance, I might want to light, and we're gonna demonstrate this um, soon. I might want to light an image with all red. So because I'm using all red, it creates different shades. There'll be black in there as well because the darkest part of the colors will always go to black when using um, a red gel. So therefore it's a monochromatic uh, image. Even though it's not black and white, it's still lit by two colors. It's lit by, you've got black, your shadows, and then you've got your highlights, which are everything's gonna be red. So therefore it's a, a, a monochromatic um, image. Hopefully everyone uh, understands that, but you can easily light um, an image with, with one colored light, whether it's blue, whether it's cyan, whether it's, it's red. For me, color is, it's about art. It's not about, it's not about photography being right. So photography is very subjective when it comes to lighting when you start using gels this is the creative side of you coming out so there is no wrong and there is no right nothing's lit correctly um, it's about you separating yourselves from everyone else and it's about creating something so with an artist they have a canvas they've got the paint brushes and some artists don't even know what they're going to paint until they're halfway through painting what they're painting um, they'll just start with a blank canvas and they add color into it uh, and then they layer the color and then finally the image comes out of the color okay so to me that is how I look at gels we'll look at some examples on perfectly lit colors with gels and then we'll look at some creative um, approach and then also I will, uh, we're gonna do a really, really creative out of the camera shot here. So I've just got a quick question that's come up. Um, for weddings, do you use one body per lens to save lens swapping and getting the dust in the camera? So Peter, uh, when it comes to uh, weddings for cameras, I use one body and I swap the lenses all the time. I kind of know where and when I'm going to uh, change the lenses. Uh, and also, when it comes to um, the cameras now, especially with the new Sony update, when you change the lens, the curtains comes down and it stops the, the sensor from being exposed. So when you take your lens off, you can't see the sensor anymore. So that was another good feature of it coming out. Um, so what do you physically change when you change from RYB to RGB, I, I, additive to subtractive or vice versa? Um, we'll see that more when I do the shoot. So that question just come in. Uh, we're going to demonstrate that when I actually do the shoot. So you'll be able to see it come in more um, when we've got the live view from the camera, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's just go back to this. So this is, this is a, a prime example of using three lights. So there is no white light. So it's cyan, uh, magenta and yellow. They're on three flashes and the flashes are right next to each other. I'm going to show you the brackets that I've made at the end of this slide to uh, show you how it was all put together. Uh, but as you can see, they are perfectly lit, but their shadows behind are all the different colours coming through. So let me just get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, this again, this one uh, used two colours on the background. So it's two lights placed behind. I'm going to demonstrate how you can do this um, with the background as well. Uh, in a moment and we'll show you how it's done. Uh, but basically two lights right behind it facing outwards. The worst thing you can do with, especially using colored gels, is put your lights on the outside facing inwards because again, it's mixing paint. What happens is when those lights come in, when they cross, they will mix and create a different color. So if you've got them facing into each other, you're gonna get more of a bleed. If they're next to each other facing outwards, 
then what happens is you get less of a bleed. And you can see this very ever so slightly on this shot. So um, if you look up at the uh, top center behind her head, you can see a slight purple, but then it's red to one side, blue to the other. And that's because the overlap's just happening there. Okay, because it's facing outwards. Uh, so this is, uh, again, an example of uh, YMC or CMY. So again, the light's hitting her, obviously because of her skin. Her skin takes a lot of, um, of light, so very nice to photograph. Um, when it comes to white people, we, we tend to, if the light's too strong and it hits us, then we bleach out. Okay, so it's the opposite term with darker skin. They, they can take a lot more light onto the skin. But we can see how the shadows have come off different colors. Now, the key to doing this as well is to have them as close to the wall as possible um, because you want to create those really sharp shadows. And the only way you're going to do that is to have them close to the wall. And the light you want off to the, say, right-hand side of the, the camera, up high, 45 degree angles pointing down. But of course, you can change the direction of the shadow with moving the light uh, up and down or around slightly. So you can play really nicely. And this is where constant light really comes into play because if I was using flash with this, when the, the flash goes off, if the shadow was in the wrong position, then what I would have to do is I would have to move the light stand, adjust the light, retake the shot, and then maybe it's in the total wrong place. So I might have to take about three to five shots to get to that right shot. When it comes to the Neos uh, with constant light, I just turn them on and put the gels on, and then what I see is what I get. If the shadows go in off um, a bit low, then I can just raise them down, because obviously if I bring the lights down, the shadow goes up. If I bring the lights up, the shadows go down. Um, so you can actually get the shot exactly how you want it before you even take the shot, before you even lift that camera up. So. Okay, so this is a, another one that's lit by, um, by colour. Um, so as you can see the gel on the background, we're creating that blue look. Uh, there's a white light on the front and then there is um, a blue light hitting the, the back as well. Okay, so um, really nice to use that. I'm just going to get rid of that. This is a, another way of using colour, okay, using gels. So this was a, a boudoir shot done actually in here. So a very small studio, you don't need a big uh, place at all. And then we've used uh, obviously white light because white is still a color. So we've used white light. And then behind we've used a red uh, light as well to uh, give a nice glow to the background. And again, with uh, color with this, um, this again was shot with uh, two lights and we've got blue hitting the background as well. So the actual light for this is the background light is to the left hand side and it's scooting along. And then what we've done is we've adjusted our white balance. So by adjusting our white balance, we can get the background to blue, how we like it. And then our main light, we adjust the Kelvin to uh, get that white light effect. Okay. Okay, so this is um, uh, another image that's been lit by gels. Okay, so um, here we have, um, it's actually one, two, three, four, it's five lights lighting the scene and only one of them is uh, white light. Okay, so it's the, the beauty dish that's just above the model's head angling down. That is what we call uh, is the, the main light, the key light. So um, the reason, so 
Murray, the reason I haven't got behind the scenes shots for uh, these lights is because we're going to actually demo uh, how to do them. But if you want a behind the scenes shots for them, I will actually put together a PDF uh, of the shots with the um, behind the scene sort of shots, how it's all uh, put together with the lights. And then I will send it out to everyone. So uh, in fact, I'll post it on my um, uh my Facebook uh, business page so everyone can grab it from there uh, to help everyone out. So uh, we've got a, a light down the, the bottom that's gelled facing up to fill in the shadows. We've got a light behind onto the background to give some separation. Two lights either side just to give some fill onto the arms and then one light above uh, that's actually uh, the key light as well. And we'll show you how you can actually use one light to create an effect, okay? So that's, that's the goal, uh, to start off one light or two lights. Let me just uh, end this now. And we will go on to uh, the next part. Okay, so now you should be seeing um, myself. And I just want to talk to you about some brackets before we get going, okay? So when it comes to mounting the Neo, so I've got a, a Neo here. Uh, the great thing with these is we can plug them directly into the mains they'll run forever or we can use them on batteries as well so this is on batteries but we'll be plugging it into the mains they have built-in gel holders so we can take that off and we've got built-in gel holders there now coming to the gel pack there's two gel packs that um, this one you actually get when you buy them you get the the standard gel pack that comes in it and it's kind of a, a corrective pack that's in there then the other pack you can buy this is the color effects pack and it basically has one two three four five uh, six seven eight nine ten ten gels in there right so all the gels are to the same uh, diameter as the neo and they fit on there perfectly ones that i use the most I use um, obviously the, the sort of the magenta and the off blue, the coral blue. And then I also use these ones. So these are frosted. Now think of it as a, a diffuser. Instead of putting modifiers on, what you can do is put one of these on the front. So uh, this will diffuse the light coming through. And if you wanted it diffused even more, you can actually put two of them and it'll soften the light up. So they're really handy to have in there as well. So uh, do I use uh, pink colors? Um, when it comes to my colors that I would probably use the most, it's going to actually be red and green. And this is what we're going to use today, red and green. So we're going to use those ones as well. And just have a quick look at these messages just to make sure that um, I'm getting through them okay. Uh, Okay, now brackets. Obviously, I use a ball joint on top of uh, my Neos. Using the ball joint, when I undo it, then I can move it around. It's very easy to place it where it wants to go. But maybe I want to use two lights at the same time, two Neos. And this is, goes to, say, lighting the background or doing that free light look. So I have these brackets that I've made. So this one here, so this is an extension bar that you put on top of your camera. As a filmmaker or a, a creator, maybe you've got a monitor and then you want to run a microphone and something else, a light. Well, you would put this on top of your camera and then it just extends your hot shoe so you can put other items on. 
So what I do is I've put uh, three little spikes there. So these are like the Manfrotto uh, standard threads that go on. And this will allow me to put three Neos onto uh, one stand. So I can have three Neos onto one stand and I can light all the different Neos with the different gels to get that effect that we was looking at um, where all the colors are different on the background. So very simple to use, uh, very cost effective, doesn't cost a lot, but it basically stays like that. And this is one of my uh, go-to brackets when I'm being a bit creative and I'm using uh, different lights to create different effects. Now the other way to do it is my background light. So the same principle. So this is my background light. It's just uh, again a metal bracket with the two different connectors and this will allow me to have two neos on one stand. So I can then have the neos facing outwards on one stand which if I've got one stand, it's easier to tuck behind uh, maybe the subject or the person. Um, and I don't need to then start photoshopping out loads of different legs. Because if you've got two stands there with two, two different lights on, to kind of bunch them all together, um, you're going to see the stands popping out of the background either side of the subject. Yes, it's easy to get rid of it in Photoshop, but I want to eliminate that. I want to try and get this right in camera as much as I can and uh, eliminate having to go into Photoshop and start editing and removing uh, loads of things out. Um, so Danny, will you let us know where to get the brackets and uh, the parts from? Uh, yes, Danny, I can um, uh, let you know where to get these from. Now, Matt should be frantically searching the, uh, the WEX website to look for all these different parts and he will uh, definitely send out links to uh, where they all are on um, on the WEX website but I will definitely send uh, a breakdown of how to make these brackets over to Matt and then Matt has your emails and he'll be able to send it out to everyone so uh, you can do that so no problem with that at all Danny. Um, so uh, Terence um, Yes, all the bits can be bought from WEX. So uh, how about the blue ball? Right, yeah, okay. So all the bits can be bought from WEX. They do sell them all. They're actually all Manfrotto uh, bits. So everything's uh, all Manfrotto bits. And the, this ball head, this is a Nova Flex, okay? So it's a Nova Flex ball head. Um, and I believe Wex do sell Novaflex uh, ball heads. And it's just got a, a Manfrotto adapter on there so it can go onto the top of a light stand. But basically, once you have this, as soon as you turn it, then I can put it at a, a right angle, I can move it around, position it anywhere, and as soon as it's where it wants to be, I can just lock that straight off with a turn of there. So it's a, it's a lot better to use a ball head. Um, so yes, uh, Terence, uh, you can get everything from WEX. So let's clear them off. And then finally, before we get started, uh, I just want to talk about, um, so you're right, Nick Thatcher does the same thing with, uh, with very cheap um, uh, lights as well. So basically, what's, to answer this question, what's good about the Neo 2s versus, um, you know, buying sort of cheap uh, flashes or anything like that? Well, in my eyes, it's, it goes to this scenario of what you see is what you get. I mean, we spend thousands and thousands of pounds now on these cameras, these mirrorless cameras. So when we look for them, we get this live view all the time of all the changes we make. But then when it comes to flash, we still have to guess um, if it's going to be correct. And we still have to take multiple shots to get to where we need to be. When you're doing shoots for uh, product companies, which time is of the essence, you want to be productive and fast and to have a, a better turnaround. You also want your client to basically be able to see what you get. So I normally have a screen up. 
Um, so whoever's sitting in, they can see themselves on their screen. And when it comes to the Neo 2, when I light it, before I even take a picture, the client can actually see what the, the image is going to be like. I can see where the shadows are falling, where the light's falling, if the light's wrong. I can make my adjustments. So then when it comes to taking the actual shots, I'm, I'm ready to go for the whole shoot, uh, not to keep uh, my client hanging on. So that's the advantages that I would say using uh, constant light over flash. Uh, so just to uh, finish on, obviously, this part before we do the little shoot, uh, the AOS as well, you can get the, the gels for the AOS. Uh, again, it's just a little extra pack you can uh, buy and it comes with all the gels in. So it doesn't matter which lights you have, you can actually get the, the gels for them as well. And like I touched on base on the last webinar, using the uh, trigger, is always a good thing, even if you're using your lights in, um, in the sort of the LED uh, setting and not the flash setting, because it means you can make all your adjustments on the fly using the trigger. So if you've got a, quite a wide setup with a lot of lights in, it's good to use the trigger to adjust that. Um, and then the last thing I will say, and then we're gonna set up and get this uh, shot, uh, little shot done, is white balance is also a very big part in gels. So if you gel a Neo2 and you just take the picture and you think, you know what, that red, it doesn't look very, very deep, a, a deep red, then look at your white balance that's set on the Neo2. Because if, uh, if you drop your white balance down or warm it up, it actually affects the color. So you can actually make the red deeper or less saturated by adjusting your white balance on the Neo while the gel's on. The other thing to take into a note is when using gels, you, uh, to get a, a much more vivid color, you use the lights on a lower power. So the higher power you go, the more light you're putting through that gel, uh, the, the less vivid that that color is going to be. It sort of washes it out. So if you want a nice vivid color, then you use them down on low power and you get that nice vivid color. So when it comes to, uh, so Murray's uh, just asking how much of the NEO's flash capability do uh, I use? So I'm hoping to do another webinar just on NEO's and the flash capability. Uh, if I'm to be really honest, I actually don't use the NEO's for the, the flash side of it. I actually use them for the constant light. Uh, I, I probably rarely use the, the flash side of, of things, but that's only because um, my sole purpose is to use them uh, to get the shots before I even pick up the camera. So I use them as a constant light source. Uh, I, I've used it a handful of times at weddings to get the, the, you know, the dance shots in the evening, because when you use them in the flash mode, uh, it, you get, a modeling light that sort of is on all the time. So your focus will, will lock on quicker because obviously it can see the subject. Um, and then once you hit the shutter button, then obviously then it'll, um, it'll flash and you get the uh, exposure you want. So, but I also like to, uh, to use the LED part when they're dancing. It's that same principle because you're lighting the subject with the LED as you're taking the shot your focus is just acting like it's daylight, locking on straight away, it doesn't hunt, uh, and you get the shot a lot quicker. So I do like using them in the, um, in the evening for the dance shots. Right, we're gonna uh, set up now to do, to do this little live shot. We're gonna use Lisa. It'll get a little bit dark because we're going to turn some uh, lights off over in the studio side uh, and I'm just going to set up the camera now. So let's just set up the camera. I'm going to have to share a different screen in a minute and then we'll get things going and we'll do a little shoot with the lights and I'll explain what we're doing as we're going along. So I'm using the Sony A9 uh, II for this. 
and I'm going to use the image edge software to start it. So I'm just going to start up the tether inside of things. Let that connect. And then we'll put this on this screen and then we will start viewer as well. And I'll set up the screen. And then we can get started. Right, so let me share my screen again. Okay, so now you should uh, be able to see uh, my, uh, my screen. So let's put this to about there. Uh, so David, uh, yes, it's uh, tethered in. So I'm using uh, a tether tools cable and uh, it's plugged into the side of the uh, A9 into the, um, into the um, computer. So normally I actually don't use the, the cable. Normally I use, there's two ways we can do it. I have used the Air Direct, which is a wireless tethering uh, software that uh, sorry device that goes on top of the camera and i wirelessly tether to uh, the computer or with the a92 it's actually got built-in wirelessly tethering into it so then i will uh, connect to the computer via that way the only reason i'm actually using hardwire at the moment is because we're running an awful lot of um, programs on the computer so for me to uh, run the wireless part of it as well. We're just asking ourselves uh, for problems because we're running Zoom, we're running capture software with uh, the camera that's seeing me uh, and umpteen other bits of software as well. So that is why uh, I'm hardwired in at the moment. So let me just bring that down. Um, we've got that there. No problem, uh, David, uh, happy to answer that. Okay, so uh, you can see my camera and my settings now all on the left hand side. Um, so I'll just quickly answer this one. Rob, could you explain how you use the rotor light for uh, reception and first dance lighting? I'm looking to uh, transition completely to rotor light lighting now. I have an AOS and a uh, yep, so I'll just quickly answer this uh, for Alex and then we're going to get on with the shoot. So um, when it comes to uh, the, the first dance, so I will literally have, I have a, a lollipop for the, um, the rotor light. So I'm going to quickly just grab this so I can show Alex because uh, we all want to get these questions answered. So if you can see the picture of me at the top right hand side, if you can't, then it will... Um, it will be on a video and I can demonstrate how you're going to see this later on. But I have this little handle and then the handle sits on top of, so the road light sits on top of the handle. So I've got that there. Then I can literally hold this above the, the couple as I'm taking the shot. And then on top of the camera, I have the, the Ellen Crom trigger for the road lights. If you do it that way, then you can use the, the sort of the high speed sync capability of the rotor light because rotor light has a sky port built into it uh, so this will enable us to we, i mean we could shoot up to eight thousandth of a second if uh, if we like um, i'm going to ask rod a couple of questions near the end uh, that i know people want to know on the rotor light uh, but i think let's just get this shot done and then i'll come back to that question i will come back to the end so you can see my camera settings here on the, the right hand side. Um, we can change what comes in. So let's just change it to a JPEG. Um, so where it comes in and we'll just go for a medium JPEG just so it flies in nice and fast. Um, everything else here, the way we set up uh, when we were working with Sony in this tethering. So this is Sony's own tethering software, the remote. So I name a folder down the bottom where it goes into. Um, so if you wanted to use 
this with Lightroom, then you just set Lightroom to have a watch folder and it watches that and it'll automatically bring it in because uh, Sony cameras don't directly tether into Lightroom. Uh, they do tether directly into Capture One, but I actually want you to see this live view here on the right hand side as I'm taking the pictures as well. So uh, you get to see the image as we're building it up. If I just tethered into normal software, then we won't have that live view. You won't be able to see it. So let's bring uh, Lisa over and we'll just sit Lisa down. I'm going to show you some little tricks on uh, what we can do. So we'll just turn this light off for now. Glasses, no glasses. Uh, we'll stick the glasses on. And I'm going to turn this light off as well. So we're going to go into a little bit of darkness there um, so we can uh, see what's going on. We're going to go for and once I set the camera up, we'll do a little quick uh, focus on Lisa. So just look over to that way, just there. Perfect. Okay. So I tend to use back button focusing. Um, and the reason I do this is because I've already focused on Lisa now and that's it. I can just take every shot as I go on. There's no need for me to keep refocusing uh, the camera all the time. So I'm going to get the first light set up. And I'm going to show you how um, we stick the gels on. So we've got the Neo 2 here. It's got batteries in, but I'm going to plug it into the mains. I'm going to use a red gel on this. I'm going to stick the red gel on, simply just pop it on and then you pop the cover back on and give it a little twist. Okay and that's it. So we've got the red gel all in place. I'm going to turn this main light off um, so you can get a proper effect of what's coming in as well. So uh, let's see what's going to happen there. I'm just going to pop this on the stand. Right, so let's just quickly just turn this main light off. And then we can see exactly what's coming in. So I can look here and I can position to see where it's coming round. I can also adjust the height. I'm going to just take a quick photo there so we can see what's happening. and make sure that all comes in. So that's coming in nicely. So you can see how fast that just shot over. Obviously we uh, changed it to a JPEG and a smaller image, um, but it, it appears instantly there on the left hand side. Now I'm gonna have to keep flicking over so I can see uh, the questions. Rob, the model is in horizontal position. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I, I can't change that because it's, that's the capability of the software. Uh, let me see if I can rotate. Oh, there we go. I'm going to take that back. It's, uh, so thanks for pointing that out, Danny. Um, we can change the rotation of the software. So hopefully you'll be able to see her all fine there. Good shout out for that. Everyone would have had a, a nice sore neck um, for, um, for trying to uh, look at that. So as you can see, we've got the lights hidden least. We've got this lovely red glow of a light um, as it hits Lisa and then it comes into uh, the, uh, the camera. Now, one of the things you do have to know when you are using gels, you do need to think ahead. So just stay looking like that, Lisa. No, like that, perfect. 
So you need to think ahead of the colors. So when you look at the, the camera, uh, the live view, we can see those lovely sort of reds, those vivid reds coming out. But then when you see the, the JPEG come in, the JPEG doesn't look as, as vivid. Well, there is a reason for that because in my settings, um, just because the way I edit, because I actually shoot JPEG for all of my weddings, I actually don't use RAW, I use JPEG. Um, and I actually set all my saturation and contrast down slightly. So when it comes to me editing the JPEG, when I add my style on, that's the look you see on my website, that's the look I get. So I actually set in camera for it to be a little bit desaturated. Uh, so you need to think ahead to get the vivid colors. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna go into uh, your vibrance setting, lift the vibrance setting up a little bit and the saturation a touch. Don't go mad on the saturation. It, the vibrance is the key and also your white balance is the key. So I want to show you about white balance before I move on. Now I'm at 5900 Kelvin now, but if I change it, now did you see that? I'm not adjusting the power, I'm actually adjusting the Kelvin setting. This is the color temperature. So now I'm at 6300 Kelvin, look at the cheek on uh, Lisa. So now I'm just gonna go straight down to 3200. Now look at the cheek on Lisa. So you can see how the Kelvin alters the red tones in, um, in the gel. So at the higher end of the spectrum at like 6600, we actually get this really nice even red light onto the cheeks. But if we go down, we get this kind of a little bit of a muddy sort of uh, uh, redness coming just below the bottom. So I like to set a, a, a sort of a mid-tone. I kind of go to about 59, 5900 when I'm uh, using a red gel and it gives a, a nice tone to the skin. So let's think about if we was going to add another light in, before we get this final effect, what could we uh, do? So we looked at it before. So the opposite to red is green or cyan, okay? So let's use a green or a cyan color to, uh, to create our first sort of look, our first image. So I'm just gonna get another Neo and pop it on a stand. I'm actually gonna put uh, a green gel onto this. And we'll get a stand and we'll pop this on. Again, if you get any questions as we're going along, after we've done this one, I'm gonna show you how to uh, light the background with two different colors. Okay, so lights on, let's just turn it on. Now, when I turn it on, the strange thing is, I never adjust the power. Wherever the power was from the last setting, that's where I leave it. So I've just turned it on. We've got like this, uh, it's a very pale green, more of a, an aquary sort of green, uh, but it complements the red as well. Now, looking at this, you can see it's a little bit bright on uh, the left-hand side uh, than the right-hand side. So this is where, I'm gonna come around here. This is where, having the light, what you see is what you get scenario. So bring that down. Okay, I can sort of handle that a touch. And then let's just bring that down to there. So let's just take a quick shot. So now what we can see, looking at the live image, well, let me just uh, have a look at some uh, questions here. Raj, hi Robert, are you using frosted clear uh, gels also, uh, frosted clear gels also, or just red and green gels? So good, um, good question, Raj. I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, they're actually just, just 
red and green. So none of them are frosted, they're all just um, normal gels. With your ISO and aperture settings, why did you make this choice? Could you advise uh, what the long, uh, long support was for the Neo 2? Okay, so uh, Terence, why I picked uh, the apertures that I'm using. So I'm shooting F2. The reason I'm shooting F2, so in my studio, I, I actually think of uh, my aperture as a, a built-in Photoshop, okay? So the way that it works is, Lisa is about a meter away from the background. So I've got a, a gray paper background that's up there. If there's any imperfections in the background, it'll show up straight away. If you're shooting at F8 or, you know, like five, six, it's gonna show up straight away. Now I wanna create a depth to the image. I want her shoulder to go out of focus so we can see that her far shoulder is out of focus. Um, her face is in focus. And I wanna create this depth to images. So if I shoot at F2, it's like having this built-in Photoshop where all the imperfections in the background disappear. And then from Lisa's nose, all her skin's all nice and smooth as it sort of dissipates over towards the background. So that's why I shoot at low apertures. If you wanted to shoot a lot uh, higher apertures, say you only you're started at f2.8 or f4, then all you would do is raise your ISO uh, up slightly to compensate for, for that as well. Um, and then let me just... Uh, read could you advise what the long support yep so i'm going to uh, come back to that at the end raj and let you uh, all know oh, sorry terence that was yeah um how close to the red neo is the subject so martin the red light is about i'm going to do a wide shot on the camera at the end so you'll be able to see the exact setup so it's about a meter away from Lisa. The red light is about a meter away from Lisa. And then the, the green light is directly behind her shoulder, okay? Onto the background. And Lisa is about a meter away from uh, the background itself. So uh, I'm not using uh, flash um, on this as well. So someone's just asked, am I using uh, flash as well? No, so this is purely, everything is all uh, constantly lit with Neo 2. So I'm only using two Neo 2s. Yep, so uh, David, so the first light, the red light, that's onto uh, the model. Um, Lisa and then the second light which is the green light that is onto the background okay so that is those questions answered there so uh, I'll uh, I'm going to switch on um, the light in a minute I'll do a wide shot so you can actually see the setup so for me this is it's all about creating something so I'm going to now you need to be watching the live, the, the right hand side of the screen now. Watch the live um, session. So, I like my own personal work, I like to create something. Uh, let me just read this last one from uh, Trevor. Uh, what is the power settings of the Neo 2? Trevor, you're, uh, I, I'm going to uh, give that secret away. You're, you're getting ahead of me. I was going to tell everyone that in a minute. In a minute. So, I, I will let everyone know. And people's minds will be blown. Let me do this one little trick and then we will uh, get onto power settings. So, what we're going to do,
So if you could see those uh, images coming up, what I use is it's a little tiny bit of plastic and it's got to, it gives like this rainbow effect. It's very small. Now, if you can get light to bounce off it on the, the right way, you can create some really stunning sort of light leaks. So as you can see on the left hand side of the camera, you can see that this light leak will start to come into effect. And we get these rainbow colors coming in. So if you're trying to emulate um, film with light leaks or, or anything like that, then this is how we can do it. And again, it's about playing with color and introducing color. Using this little film, I'm actually introducing color into, uh, into it. So another way you could do it, I'm gonna uh, just get a gel. So, now the colour on the left hand side, that's me holding a gel coming over. So what I can do, you can see there, I can actually use gels in front of the lens to create a vignette effect. So that's another way of being creative with the gels. So I'm going to just turn on this light so you can have um, a look at the actual, I'm just going to take that last picture. Perfect. Glancing down, Lisa, there, stop there. Perfect. Nice. There. Nice silhouette coming then. Look over towards me, stop. That's it, just there. Okay, so we've got some really nice, interesting colors going on there. So let me switch this light on and let me just bring out the, the camera. And then we're going to go back to the background before we um, finish because we are uh, way over what we need to do. So let me just come out to here. And I'm going to do a little zoom out. Which you should get in there. Let's move this out of the way. And then I can tell you um, where we are. So. This light, this is um, the, the red gel light. The, the power setting on this is at 10%. Okay, so Trevor, uh, the red light, the key light is at 10%. How crazy is that, that uh, the, the key light is only on 10%. Everyone thinks when it comes to LED lighting that you have to put it all the way up to 100% or 50% power. I very rarely use these past 25%. Uh, so. This one is on um, 10%, okay? So that's the key light a meter away from Lisa. If I'm to go to this background light, so now I'm just standing just behind Lisa. So this background light, this is on 6%. It's right behind Lisa and it's a meter away from the background. It's on 6%. So when it comes to uh, the actual white balance i'm going to come to that in a, a moment just zoom me in slightly so when it comes to um uh, both lights they're both on 5900 kelvin okay because that gave gave the nicest look to them uh, someone's just said but why wouldn't i use uh, the native iso uh, to be honest with you I'm at ISO 640 um, on a Sony camera, on a full frame camera. There'll be no noise, no nothing there. You won't even notice um, that. Uh, as a wedding photographer, I shoot at 6400 and above um, a lot of the time at weddings. So a native ISO is 100. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, uh, you could just bring it down. You could shoot at ISO 100. All that would happen is the power of the lights then would compensate and go up. So uh, if you shot at ISO 100, you'd probably then be working on about 50% power uh, with the, the Neo 2s. For me, I like grain in my image. So if anyone knows my work on my website, if you look, you'll actually see, I actually add a lot of grain into my image. It's how I work. So 
I actually very rarely shoot at ISO 200. I'm always roughly around about 320, 640. That's kind of um, where my, I'm always shooting as well. So I, I hope that helps. It's basically just, it's personal preference. If, if you wanted to shoot at ISO 100, um, then you could put the Neos on 50%. Um, if you wanted to run them at 10%, then you can uh, put your ISO to like 640. And remember, this largely goes to if you're shooting with them plugged into the mains or on batteries. So if you've got them plugged into the mains, then by all means, put your ISO at ISO 200, say the native ISO, um, and then um, you know crank them up to 50% and shoot all day long. But if you run them on the batteries and maybe your shoot is going to last you all day, think about the batteries that you've got in the lights. If I just put my ISO up to um, ISO 640, it would mean I'm running my lights on 10% power, which would pretty much mean they're going to run on batteries all day long. Okay, so uh, think of it like that. It, it depends on the scenario. Okay, I don't often have my lights plugged into the mains. Uh, I more more often than not, I shoot them on the battery mode as well. So let's um, just go on to the last quick shoot before we uh, round this up. Uh, I know we're, uh, we're getting on, but everyone's still with us. We've got a, a good number of people. So let's do another um, shoot. So let's change this over. In fact, I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave it on this one so you can see what's going on as I just change some things around and then we'll uh, turn it onto the other screen and we'll go from there. So. I'm going to use this bracket now. So uh, again, all the parts are Manfrotto, this little arm here, uh, these little brass connectors and this arm here. So they're all Manfrotto parts. You can buy all the parts from uh, Wex, uh, no problems at all. And then at the end, once we finish this shoot, I will show you uh, the lollipop setup uh, that I use and how I attach uh, the road to light to it. But I just want to show you uh, lighting the backgrounds with uh, one of these. So we will basically unplug this. I'm going to bring this round and drop it down so you can actually see me. Um, let's move that out of the way. Let's turn this off a minute. And then you'll see why I use this. So you should be able to see it there. So what you do, this just goes onto the light stand as normal. Okay. And now that's set it all up. So when it comes to gels, I've got a, a red gel on so that can stay on. So then this light, We'll go on one side. And let's just get another light from the background and show you how this all works. Move that out of the way. And this is where the Neos really shine, you know, using them on the, the battery scenario. So I've just unplugged them all. We're going to use everything on the battery. So again, I'm going to put in uh, uh, a flat blue for this. We'll just stick a blue in. Uh, just have a look at this question. Robert, I just want to say thank you uh, to you, uh, Lisa. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you coming on board and uh, watching this as well. So this light comes on here. Now, now I have two Neos mounted on uh, both stands, but what I'm gonna do is we are gonna angle one out and one slightly out, okay? So you, you can basically see they're both angled outwards. And this is gonna be my background light. So I'm just gonna move it around to the back of Lisa. And we will drop it down slightly. And we'll turn them on. And we'll 
have set them both to um, the same power because they're next to each other. So we're both just going to go on to 10% power and both behind Lisa. Right. Now, let's go back to uh, the camera. We'll switch the light off and then we'll be able to see what's going, uh, what's going on. Okay, uh, thanks Dave uh, from Notting, Notting, Northern Ireland, sorry. Thanks Dave, appreciate you being uh, on here. So let's just quickly share my screen again. And turn this last light off so we can see what's going on. Okay, so now you can uh, see, let's just take a quick uh, shot. So that comes in, there you go. So now you can see how we're lighting the, the background with two lights. Uh, and we've got an even split of lights there that's coming up. Just to confirm, uh, just, just, to, uh, just confirm to do this, you want to be in a room with no natural. No, not, not at all. So Serena, um, I hope I've got your name right. So, you said that uh, just to confirm not to be in a room with any natural light. No, no, I mean, there can be natural light coming in, but the more white light that comes in, it's going to wash out the effect. It's got, not going to have a much more vivid effect. So to have a nice vivid effect, then you want to control the light. So the more ambient light you get rid of when you are using light, then you're going to see more of it and it's going to be more vivid um, and you can basically see where it's falling. For instance, if I'm doing a wedding in the evening um, and I want to do maybe an effect, maybe I want to put a blue gel behind, say you're doing the shot where they're standing at um, out in the, the front of the, uh, the main uh, reception building, and you want to do that shot where that someone puts a flash behind and the flash goes off and they're illuminated. Well, for me, using the Neo is a much better approach to do that because if I put a Neo behind them, if I've got the trigger on top, then I can go off a distance and then I can see the exact outline that I'm gonna get from them. Then I can adjust the power setting of the light from the camera and turn that up and down. I can instantly see if it's gonna be correct. But what I can do is I can put my camera's Kelvin to match all the, uh, all the tungsten light coming out the, will, uh, the, the windows of the premises so it's lit cor correctly. And then on the light itself, I can stick a gel. Maybe I stick a blue gel to give them this blue outline or maybe I stick an orange gel on to give them this lovely glow, this lovely orange glow from behind them and create this lovely separation light. Okay, thanks, Murray. Uh, good to uh, have you on board as well. So, uh, yep, yeah, so if the walls are colored different, uh, Matt, and you're bouncing the light off the, the walls, then obviously it, it still affects it because it's, it's white light coming from the, the Neo. It hits, say, if it's, a, if it's an orange wall, then it creates a color cast. But what you can do is you can match the Kelvin to the, the color cast that's coming off the wall. So at least then when the light comes off, it's, um, it's correctly exposing the couple. And if you put the right Kelvin in your camera, then it'll be white light that's coming off there as well. So that's kind of how you do, uh, let me go back to the computer so I can wind this up for you and turn this light back on. And let's just go back to uh, myself there. So there you go. That's how you light a background with two Neo lights. And it's also how you get creative with using the Neo 2s and gels as well. Um, so we have run uh, over uh, loads. Uh, I do just want to ask Rod a question when I go to the panelists. I'm just going to unmute you for a minute, uh, Rod. So can you hear me, Rod? 
Yes, I can. So one of the questions that came up uh, quite a few times is, does the, the Neo 2, does it have a guide number like flashes? Um, so if you go onto our website, you can see um, that we publish the full photometric data uh, on the light. I think the, the one thing is you've kind of alluded to, um, Rob, yourself on the, on the uh, chat today is that with modern mirrorless cameras, you know, guide numbers were created and are based on an ISO of 100. And, um, you know, it's not necessary with the current quality of um, sensors on mirrorless cameras to shoot everything at ISO 100. You know, as you've seen today, you can happily shoot 400, 648, you know, 800 without any issue. Uh, whatsoever and so um, working with LEDs is a little bit different um, uh, what I can say is we specifically on distances we publish f-stops at three feet six feet and nine feet and you'll happily be able to work with uh, Neo2 ISOs of near 200 400 800 and achieve um, you know, beautiful results with it so it's not quite the same thing because obviously continuous lighting uh, as you're working today is not quite the same as guide number etc yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think that's, you know, important to mention. And that's what I kind of uh, like to get across that uh, with, with cameras nowadays, how the sensors have evolved, that, you know, noise and ISO, I mean, it's kind of a thing of the past. You, you can quite happily shoot at ISO 1600 and it'd have no effect on the image as well. Um, and we're definitely moving towards that you know, what you see is what you get scenario, especially when it comes to constant light. So we can use these lights to get the shot we want a lot faster and a lot easier set up as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, to give you, to give you a specific sense. So, you know, you had the light set up at three feet for the key light and, you know, you were using it just the 10% ISO 640. Um, you know, if you turn that light up to 100%, then, uh, you know, giving some of the numbers I have here, for example, you could shoot, if you wanted to shoot as low as ISO 200, you could get F8. Um, you know, three feet um, at a uh, 60th of a second. Um, if you had the ISO at say 400, then you could get to F11 on it with a Neo 2, you know, which is the least powerful light in our range. So there's plenty of power. It's the most, it's the brightest um, on camera LED on the market, um, but you know, it has more than enough power for the current generation of mirrorless cameras. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And that's, you know, it's my preference to actually shoot with them at 10% power. I mean, for a wedding photography, the way that I use them, uh, especially a Neo 2, I have it set up uh, as though it's a reflector. I have it on the a handle and I use the Neo 2 at weddings as it's a reflector. And because we can adjust the white balance, if I'm in a room doing a bride shot and we've got that lovely window light coming in, and that's hitting one side of them, say the makeup's being done, because normally the makeup artist always does the makeup near uh, the window. But then we've got this uh, shadow on the other side of us. So if we get a, a Neo 2, we simply set um, the white balance to 5600 Kelvin, which is daylight. And then we introduce that on like 10% power on the right hand side. And we, we fill those uh, shadows in and we can get that stunning image straight away uh, in camera instead of going to you know lightroom or um you know photoshop and thinking oh you know i'll lift the shadows up there because then that lifting the shadow up affects the whole scene and you get into the scenario that you've got to start creating masks and uh concentrating on just one side of a face as where with the neo it's literally a, a two minute job just to put it on 10 percent power uh added into your shot and then um, away you go so I'm just going to uh, mute you uh, now, Rod, for a moment. Uh, I'm just going to get to the Neo while the screen's on me. I'm going to show you how it attaches to the lollipop, how I use it um, as a reflector, and then I think we will call it a day. So um, let's grab one of these. Turn that off. So. This little handle here, um, this is a, a Lastalite handle. Uh, I've had it a while now. So Wex will send out, um, or Matt from Wex will send out a, a list of handles that you can use with the, the Neo. Rotolite do do a handle as well, but their handle is what I'm gonna call, it's static, so it doesn't extend. The reason I use this, so that's, that's how I use it. It sits on the handle uh, like this. 
I have the ball head still attached. So if I want to move it off to the side, you see how, and that way, if I'm holding it down, I can angle it up to add the light in. But the reason I use this handle is because if I flick, we can extend it. And that allows me then to, uh, you know, hold it a bit further out to let a bit of light in or hold it up onto the couple as we're uh, taking the picture. So it's, it's just for speed instead of having a stand with me all the time. Uh, I will just have this tucked in my bag and where I can just pull it out and I can just take a shot straight away. So this little concoction with the handle and the ball head, it works really well for me as a wedding photographer. And that is how it lives in my bag and goes everywhere with me. So uh, like that. Um, so I hope that's helped. I'm just going to uh, unmute Rod and um, uh, ask Matt to uh, come in as well. So uh, Matt, are you there? I'm here, Rob. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks, um, Matt. Uh, so is there anything that you'd like to add, Matt? Um, uh, anything that uh, you want to cover? No, 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 no just, just to say thanks so much to you and to your wife and to, to Rod. Um, appreciate you, you giving us this time and to all the attendees who've joined us, many thanks. Um, as I mentioned on chat, I'll be sharing some links um, after the session. And if there's any questions that you have after the, the event is over, then feel free to email events at wex.co.uk. We'll jump on that for you. Cool, brilliant. That's uh, brilliant, man. And, and Rod, is there anything that you would like to add before I uh, end this? No, just to mention, obviously, we've got some uh, fantastic offers with Wex. So if you are interested, uh, you know, as Matt says, get in touch. But otherwise, to say thanks, uh, Rob, to yourself. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And, you know, we hope we might be able to bring you some more of these seminars. Uh, so keep, uh, keep posted and keep looking out on, on everyone's social channels for more seminars to come up. Brilliant stuff. Uh, well, thank, thanks a lot for uh, Rod and Matt for taking the, the time out as well to uh, come on board and answer the questions um, and sort everything out. Uh, Thank you to all of you for uh, coming along and making this happen. So watching and all your questions and answers, we love uh, uh, all of those. So it keeps us going. And um, also thanks to uh, Lisa for jumping in and being a model. Um, if you do have any ideas that you want to see things happen in the future, uh, flash workshops using the Neo2 AOS um, uh, workshops then, do direct that over to uh, Rotolight and Wex, and I'm sure that'll make that happen. Keep an eye out on the Rotolight events page for more coming up, and head over to my website as well, uh, and make sure you, um, you follow me on, uh, on there, uh, and my social network links as well, because I'm always posting when we're doing these events. So on that note, we've run way over, but hey, you know, it happens as long as it keeps us all busy in this, um, in this bit of a crazy time. So from me, keep safe and um, keep on taking pictures. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thanks a lot for watching.